Alrighty, hi everyone, hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and here I talk about mental health, minimalism, and my family's little journey of trying to have a baby, which is exciting to say. Okay, so today we are doing a topic that I did like six months ago that you guys really enjoyed, which was me going through things that I was influenced to buy, but did not. And I think that this whole kind of de-influencing thing is like, so good at the moment like it's just a really good thing to be doing just in general because like there is so much really good marketing out there like people they get in our heads and it's crazy and it feels like all you're hearing is like get this thing buy this thing this thing is great you need this thing this thing will improve your life and it's just really important to have that other media there saying like no this thing is stupid don't do not do that it makes no sense um, and so that's kind of what I'm hoping to do today a little bit. So hopefully you have identified some of the products from the thumbnail because I'm going to try to put nice pretty pictures everywhere. Um, and let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing that I was influenced to buy that I didn't is a Will and Bear hat. I will put a photo of it here. I think the general premise with this is basically just that it's like a wool felted hat. Yeah, I think that's it. Anyway, all of the photos, they look super cute. And there's all of these reviews being like, that this was just like the best hat ever, that it's so amazing, da da da. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, does my head get hot? And then I was like, okay, maybe it's for like all year round. So like maybe it's a little bit warm in summer, but then maybe it helps you keep warm in winter. But then I was like, but I get cold little, little ears in winter. I need those like headbandy things to cover it. And then I'm thinking through this and I'm like, like well, hard, like wear a headbandy thing and then also wear this. And if the hat stops here and the wind's coming at me like this, it's not gonna protect my ears. And I'm just sitting here trying to justify like how this would work for my life. And also I don't really like wearing hats that much. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not a hat person and maybe I could want to be a hat person, but I don't think that, I mean, I mean it's that thing that we often get sucked into, right? Where like, let's say you don't do like long coats and then you're like, I'm going to become a long coat person. And it's like, okay. Um, but if this is not a part of your thing. You're, you're like your life regularly and you haven't tried it. Why are you going to go out and make this big investment? So anyway, um, I've, I've looked at this like a few times and I just really, really can't justify it. So unless something drastically changes and I really feel like being a hat person and also I figure out how this hat is meant to work, whether it's meant to be warm or cool or whatever, which I don't know if I'm ever gonna figure that out. Um, I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna leave that one alone. It is cute. It would be great for photographs, but I don't think that this is like an everyday life item, if we're being honest. The next thing is a bread maker. Now, y'all know that I like to make my bread. However, <laughs> I, I started getting into this feeling of like I wanted to be doing stuff that wasn't just sourdough loaves and for a little bit there it was really tricky to find time to do sourdough loaves and I'd seen some creators online using a bread maker to do sourdough stuff so I looked into it as I always do I always have to do my research <laughs> And I could only find like one bread maker that I didn't even know if I could get a hold of that had like a proper sourdough setting. And the more I looked at it, I was like, this is just going to then create like a different schedule for me to try fit into. Like, yes, the sourdough schedule can be annoying, but I just decided to look at alternatives. So I was like, look, we're not going to do the whole bread maker thing because I think that actually it's not really going to solve a problem. And then it's going to be a whole extra appliance that I then have to store and whatever. So my, my alternative to that of like not being able to find enough time to do sourdough every week, just with like some days working from home, some days not, is that when I make a loaf, I try to freeze some so that I have some in the freezer because it's actually really good from frozen. And also to try and utilize like my um, sourdough English muffins that take less time and work than a full sourdough loaf. Um, and that's been better. I kind of don't feel like I'm like missing out on making sourdough, but it didn't require me to have a whole extra appliance and like figure out a whole new schedule of how I would make bread with a bread maker. Okay, this next one was kind of hard to describe because I kind of struggled to find it, but it is this cute glass pot from Amazon. So I saw 
so many creators like a couple of months ago so I think that this was like in the height of winter for um for the northern hemisphere was everyone was making like little simmer pots with this little glass pot thing and I was like what is this like how is it that that we're using glass as like cookware now and it was really interesting and I was like that is that's very interesting. And I was like, is this like a, is this like a new thing? Is this like a retro thing? I don't know. It looked kind of, kind of retro, kind of like, like 1960s Pyrex kind of situation. And so I was like, what if there are like retro ones of these? Like that would be really cute. And so I was like, let me, let me like have a look into this. Let me do my research, do my research, do my research. So I did my research. Um, and all I could find was this random glass pot thing on Amazon that like everyone had like listed with their affiliate links and their storefronts, which I'm not cool enough to have yet. Would I list it? I don't know. I'd be like, if you really want it, I can't find it anywhere else. So get it from this link from Amazon, I suppose, if you really want it. Uh, um, but it was, yeah, all, all I could find was this one that was listed on Amazon. Like it doesn't exist anywhere else. And I'm like, Okay, if this is actually like a like a cute and or useful product, it would exist in more than one place, right? Like this is just a really big push from whatever seller that is creating this in China, selling it through Amazon. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna buy this thing and then have it like, I don't know, freaking shatter everywhere after a few months, you know? If there's not like a long lasting, hard wearing OG version of this thing, I feel like it's just going to be a bad idea. So I was like, no, we're not, we're not going to that. Would it be cute if there was like a really good solid version of this that I could have for a really long time and use a lot for lots of different things? Like, yeah, sure. That'd be great. Literally as I'm doing this video, my dog has now decided to play with the, you know, the bubble wrap, the little bubbles and you go, he's now decided to start playing with that while I'm recording. Give me a sec. The next thing that I was influenced to buy, but did not, is a robo vacuum. I feel like there was a period of time, um, a month or two ago, where everyone was talking about how they had got one of these and how amazing they were. So the robo vacuum, they're the little circular things and people put photos on the internet of their cat sitting on them, like going around the house. <laughs> Um, and yeah, for a while there, I was looking and I was like, people are right. There are, there are some really cheap ones of these that have got really good reviews. Like maybe this is actually going to be really helpful because at the moment we vacuum every kind of two days because we have a dog and we have a very small house. So the floor gets dirty like quite quickly. Um, and then I remember that it only really takes me like five minutes to vacuum. And I was like, eh, yeah, no. No, I do not need another thing to like to empty and to clean and to have break down and all of this. So yeah, I was like, Nyeh. everyone else can keep saying that it's great for them and that's fine and I'm totally happy for them, but I do not think that this applies to me right now. I do not think that this is something that I need to change my approach on, right? You know, people can have the best recommendations in the world, but if you feel like your system works fine for you, carry on doing that thing and that thing is almost always going to be the cheapest option for you right like our vacuum cleaner does not use consumables has not um, we've had it for four years now right like we're just going to keep on using that bad boy the next thing i was influenced to buy but did not is barefoot shoes if you haven't heard of this you'll be like what the heck is barefoot shoes are you wearing shoes or are you barefoot the whole premise of barefoot shoes is that instead of them having like lots of foam and arch support and like kind of squishing your foot in, they are things that protect your feet and are shoes, but are much more suited to you just like having your foot naturally as it would be as if you were barefoot. The reason why I, I know about this and this has kind of been advertised to me and why I was looking at it is because um, I'm very much interested in the whole sort of like alternative fitnessy style of things. Um, I am hypermobile, not like Ella's Danlos syndrome, which is like really debilitating, but just like I've had people comment on it before. I'll just I'll just show you real quick. It's not it's not that freaky. I don't think it's that freaky, but it's just that like my fingers are real flexy. So if I'm sitting here and I'm counting things out, I try to be conscious of it to not freak you guys out. But I'll just be like one, two three, four, and that's just like how my hands work. My wrists bend over 
really, really fast. So that's my thumb touching my wrist there. Everything just moves more than it should. Everything just hyper extends a bit. All that fun stuff. So what, what that means is that I am quite interested in the community that's very much about like training at end of motion and like protecting those joints and not relying on machines that stop you moving too far or whatever because I know that in my life my body's just going to move too far right like I need to actually have some kind of control around that and part of this movement is is in the barefoot space and so I don't I don't knock it like if if I was to get sent a pair of the shoes tomorrow like I would totally try them um and see how I went um I just realized that it was another thing to kind of add to my plate and that in that space I feel like I have enough to focus on at the moment without trying to change like how my whole foot support works and everything so maybe it may be something that I come back to in the future to look at um but for right now, I'm going to stick with what I'm already kind of working on to try to support my body without feeling the need to switch to like a totally different style of shoe and everything that comes along with that. When do I wear them? Do I wear them instead of running shoes? Do I wear them instead of walking shoes? Do like I, yeah, anyway, I'm going to leave that one alone for now. Nothing wrong with barefoot shoes, but I don't want to do all the research to figure out the ones that I want as well. Like that's a whole other thing. So leaving that alone for now. My goodness, first the dog and then the battery died. I am, I am pushing through it to get this video done for you guys today. <laughs> okay, so the next thing is an icy keep cup. I will put a picture of it here. It's super cute, but basically it's just like a double walled plastic cup thing that has a straw in the top. And you may be looking at me going, Laura, you said you weren't gonna get a Stanley and you have a Stanley, it was a gift. Okay. And I wanted another thing with a store and like, yes, yes I did. Okay. 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 So here's the thing. It's been summer here. It's now getting into autumn. And so I finally made it past the point and I'm like, I'm not going to get this thing because we're, we're out of that season. But for a while there, I was having so many icy drinks and I kept really wanting to just like have it in a nice cup with a little straw. S-T-R-A-W. Straw. <laughs> Um, and I could get one made of recycled plastic from a brand that I know is really good for like 20 bucks, which that's New Zealand dollars. So like, I don't know, like 12 bucks American recycled from a brand that I know is really good. And I was like, I could just get it. I could just get it. But I looked at it and I was like, I do not need it. I am doing fine with just like cups and other things that are made for hot drinks that I'm just putting cold drinks in instead. Like it's, it's. It's just a little thing, like it's just a little, it's just a little thing. I don't know. I don't know what it's like, but it's just a little thing. So I ended up pushing through that. I did actually look at some op shops to see if there was something suitable that I could get for like $2 secondhand. Um, and I did see a couple, but they just weren't quite right. And so I left it. And now that we are in autumn, it's past that season. I'm going to be back into the hot drinks. I'm not even going to be thinking about this thing for the next six months anyway. That's it. It's also a very seasonal item, right? So anyway, it was influenced to buy it. And if you are interested in one of these, this one from the Keep Cup brand looks awesome. I definitely wanted to buy it for a bit there, but I did not. I, I pushed through. So yeah. Okay, the last thing that I was influenced to buy and did not is a stand mixer. I have mentioned this before, but I went through another phase where I was very convinced of this, like quite convinced. So I like to do cooking and baking and I like to make bready things and I like to make sweet treats, all of that. And I have been finding it a little bit hard on my little handheld mixer that I got secondhand from my sister like six, seven years ago. And between kneading things by hand and all of this, and I was like, oh, I feel like a lot of this could be made easier by having a stand mixer. And that it would probably include the quality, improve the quality, include the quality, improve <laughs> the quality of what I'm making. And it's really cute. And I think I know where I would put it probably. Um, the reason I didn't get it, honestly, it's partly because I think my husband just said no to any more appliances in the kitchen, which is fair. And I'm also trying to do no more appliances in the kitchen. And I, and I feel like I didn't make a commitment to that. I probably made a commitment to that. I should probably, I should probably remember that. Bad 
mad minimalist Laura. Um, but also like, it's not that meaningful. And I go through phases where I do more baking and then I do hardly any baking. It's not as if it's something that I am consistently doing every week or twice a week or like five times a month or whatever. Or like I do a whole day of baking every month or something like that. I don't like, it's just random whenever the feeling strikes me. And to be honest, if I had then invested in something expensive to then do baking with, I would feel like I had to do more of it. And then it becomes this whole obligation thing, right? So we don't like the feeling of obligations in our life. Like we already have obligations to like go to our jobs and put on pants every day. I am wearing pants. You can't see them. I am. See? Proof. Um, and wear sunscreen and all of this, right? We've got enough obligations. We don't need to be adding more obligations. So that's why I didn't get that <laughs> but anyway slightly random slightly chaotic video today um but i hope that you guys enjoyed it let me know your thoughts and feelings and comments down below um if you agree with these and think that i made a good choice or if there's anything you need to call me out on because i said in another video that i definitely wasn't interested in something and then wanted to buy it <laughs> I'm happy to hear about my hypocrisy honestly I am and that's it right like we're all trying to be minimal in this but those marketers they they know their shit right so we have to stay vigilant and remember that most of this stuff is just crap anyway so whatever I'm gonna stop swearing in my video so much um and I will see you guys again soon and oh please let me know if you liked this and want to see more of these and I will also link the first one of these videos that I did right here for you guys too. So take care. I'll see you again soon. Bye.